Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to our uh, webinar uh, on using ArcGIS with Digimap data. So this should be relatively short, maybe about 30 minutes, and we're just going to go over how to use data from Digimap within ArcGIS. Uh, I'm Guy McGarver uh, from the Geo User Support Group, and I'll be helped by Ian Holmes, who will be answering any questions you may have uh, throughout the webinar. So just to say right from the outset, uh, you can't uh, uh, speak to us here, but if you want to ask any questions, then you'll find a questions tab on the right hand side. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions as we're going through things. Um, just some sort of housekeeping here. Uh, there will be follow-up to this webinar, so we're recording it. Uh, the, work, the recording will be on YouTube, so if you don't catch anything or you want to share it with others, then please do uh, look at it later. Uh, we'll also have the slides available. Uh, some additional slides will be there as well that we just don't have time to go into uh, through this webinar. Uh, we'll also have transcripts of all questions and answers so that uh, people can share information that uh, we've got. And there'll also be a feedback form, uh, so we'd appreciate any, any comments later on uh, would be great. So this is going to be our basic uh, outline, what I'm going to cover today, uh, some bit of what data is available from Digimap, uh, and then how to use data download to get data uh, for use within ArcGIS. Uh, what formats should I pick for using in ArcGIS? So what's the best formats to make, make your life easier, if you like? Um, how do I load the data into ArcGIS? So just some simple instructions for getting the data into uh, the GIS. And then uh, how do I style it? How do I make the data look uh, as if it's a map uh, that you might find uh, on Digimap? And then I'll point you to some other resources that we've got. Uh, obviously, there's not a lot of time today to go into things in a lot of detail, so we have a lot more detail and a lot of resources on our website that we can point you to and other ways of getting help and support from us as well. So I'll show you all that as well. So just to start off with, um, obviously, well, I'm assuming most of you, if not all of you, have used Digimap, uh, since this is the, the Digimap webinar, but... Um, in case you haven't recently, this is the, the home page of Digimap. So this is where you go to start off with to, if you say you want to get some data that you're going to then use in a GIS. So this gives you access to, to all the different uh, data collections that we have. Uh, you might not have access to all of these collections. Um, depends what, you know, what your university subscribes to. Um, but if you do have access to all of the data collections, this is basically an overview of what's what's in those. So if you're looking for Ordnance Survey data of the GB, you've got the Ordnance Survey collection, that's got the very large scale master map data, as well as terrain data, um, small scale raster data sets, um, all sorts of different uh, Ordnance Survey products in there. We've then got other collections to do with historic maps, uh, geological maps, marine uh, and coastal zone data, environment data. Uh, there's also an aerial collection where you've got detailed aerial imagery of the UK and LIDAR data. So all of that data uh, is available and in, in one form or another you can get that into ArcGIS and start using it although you might not have access to, to all of the data, uh, as I say, depends on your institution. So what I'll concentrate on mostly is the Ordnance Survey data, just because that's what most people have, and also really it, it's also got the widest range of data sets. It's got raster data, it's got vector data, it's got um, some other um, point data and various other things in there. So it is a good example um, and basically the, the same same things apply to the other collections as to the Ordnance Survey in terms of getting it into GIS. Um, <clears throat> so first of all just how do you get 
uh, how do I download the map data? Um, if you've not used it before, then what you do is you go into the data download application within Digimap. Uh, and that allows you to um, uh, get the data in whatever format uh, we supply it in uh, and then uh, use that data within uh, your application. There are similar uh, uh, applications, similar do data download applications for all the different clients. So in Historic, there's a Historic download, Geology, there's a Geology download. So just depending on which uh, type of data you want, you go into the different data download application. Um, so this is when you do a data download, this is the sort of, uh, this is the the application. This is what it looks like when you open the data download. And really there's, there's three steps that you need to follow when you're uh, wanting to get some data. Uh, <clears throat> the first is to select the, the area that you want. Um, now it doesn't matter what order you do these in, you can do it in different orders, but basically you select an area, you then choose the data, and you then add that data to a basket. Um, the data, the area you select, uh, you just draw a box, or you can use tile names, um, or you can select the whole of the screen, or different um, or use coordinates for that. Um, <clears throat> the data will always be on the left-hand side, and that's broken up into different uh, categories. So for the Ordnance Survey Collection, we've got an OS master map uh, category. We've then got backdrop mapping, land and height data, vector data, boundary location data, and uh, withdrawn data. So you can go and have a look uh, at the data download uh, whenever you want. When you get a chance, have a look through that. There's a lot of data sets, particularly with the Ordnance Survey. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not quite sure how many data, but it must be nearly 50, I would say. But lots of different data sets. Same with the other um, collections, uh, for instance, geology, you've got all the ge geology data from BGS, uh, marine, you've got data from uh, C-Zone that's got bathymetry and uh, vector data there as well. So have a look uh, and find the data that you want. Um, it might not all be within the one category. Quite often people want large-scale data, say the buildings, so you'd want the OS master map, but you also want to maybe overlay the contour data within ArcGIS, so you'd go to the land and height data category to select the contour data and maybe the terrain model data. Uh, and you might want a backdrop mapping of the 50k raster, and you would select that in there. So you can select all these different data sets. Um, more than one um, is fine. Uh, there are limits to how much data you can select in any one go. Uh, that's just to uh, to limit the, the kind of load on our servers here. So you can go back in and, and order more data if you want to do that. <clears throat> but once you've uh, selected your area, uh, selected the data that you want, you then add that data to your basket. And this is like your, your ordering system that we got here. And don't worry, there's, there's no charge for this. This is just a sort of analogy of your shopping cart, but there's, uh, there's no charge for end users for any of the data from Digimap. Um, but when you put it in the basket, you're given certain options. Uh, and this is where it starts to get important uh, to know what system that you're going to use the data in. So if you're going to use it in ArcGIS, you need to uh, select particular options when you get to the basket. Uh, the particular one that you're looking for is under format. Uh, that's the one that really affects what, uh, or how easy it is for you to use this data in uh, your ArcGIS or other GIS software. Most, uh, Data comes in multiple formats. Uh, sometimes it's we get it from Ordnance Survey in one format, and then we make it available in multiple other formats that make it easier for use within a GIS system. So sometimes we'll get it in GML, and we'll then convert it to a shapefile format because that's what most people want to use within ArcGIS. Um, 
so that it's important when you get to the basket to to know what data you're looking at and to know what format it is that you want to use in that because sometimes there can be three or four different formats available for any particular uh, product that we have and knowing which one for uh, is easiest to use in ArcGIS will make your life um, a lot simpler and make uh, using the data much quicker. Uh, usually you can always get the data in, you could convert it. We're trying to avoid you having to do any of the, the kind of hard work of conversions. Uh, we've done that uh, on this end. So once you've selected the format, uh, this is the sort of uh, decisions you want to make. So if you've got uh, vector data, the, the most common one to use for ArcGIS is Shapefile. And uh, I would recommend if that's available, then you use Shapefiles. Um, that's mostly available for all, well, it's available for most of the vector data sets that we have. Um, the other option, uh, which again is native to ArcGIS, is the file geodatabase format. Um, this uh, is able to store larger data sets than a shapefile. It's more uh, for, for large uh, data sets. Um, and so we use that for master map topography and the building heights data sets. So you might find that uh, useful as well. Sometimes though, the only option, uh, particularly some of the newer data sets, the, the network data sets that we have, uh, are only available in GML. Um, uh, and that's also true for master map and vector map local. Uh, if there's only GML, then uh, ArcGIS can now read that natively. Um, but uh, if there's also, for instance, with master map, you've got GML and file geodatabase, it would still be better to take file geodatabase unless you have a good reason uh, to take the GML. Uh, for raster, it's a bit simpler. Really, you've only got TIFF uh, for backdrop mapping, for DTMs, for uh, other types of raster data set. There's also some ASC files for the DTM. Again, that's a native ArcGIS format, which you can use. Um, and uh, so, so that's, that's the one specifically for DTMs is the .asc file format and ArcGIS will read that natively. So that's really the kind of the ones that you've got to look out for in the basket. If you see these then you're kind of onto a winner, you can use that data directly in ArcGIS without any conversions. Um, so how to check what data is available or what the format is that's available. Um, the, the easiest way is in data download next to any of the products. So here I'm looking at an extract of the vector data category. Uh, next to each product, there's an info button or a link to info. If you select that link, then it will pop up another window and that shows you what data formats are available, plus other information about it. But the data formats in this case for vector map local are GML2, DWG, and Shape. And you'll see that some of them have got a little asterisk next to them. That just means that we have generated those ourselves. So we get the data from Ordnance Survey in GML, uh, but then we use software here to convert it into both DWG and Shape. So for this, this case, uh, I, and you're wanting this in uh, ArcGIS, the, the recommendation would to use the Shape file. Uh, that would be able to be read directly by ArcGIS. So you check the information boxes, you look at every product, uh, every vector product uh, in the vector data category has got shape files. Uh, say some in the master map and other categories don't have shape files, so you have to uh, deal with those. Um, and also you can say, for instance, as saying, uh, not all your data is in one category. So you might have to look contours, which are available in the land and height category. They're also available in shape. So say you wanted to overlay vector map local with the contours, you would take both those products in shape files and overlay them in ArcGIS. So what do shape files look like? I won't go into this in a lot of detail. Just to note that a shape file is not a single file. When you unzip, unzip 
uh, uh, the data that you get from us, you'll find that there's four, minimum of four, maybe five, six files, all with the same name but different extension. These together form what's commonly called a shape file. Uh, you must keep these all together, otherwise uh, it won't work. So you need to deal with uh, those, data set, those files as one data set. Uh, although the main one is the .shp file, and that's the one that you, you load. Um, for topography master map, uh, we recommend you take the file geodatabase format. Again, we've converted that ourselves, so it's got a star next to it. Um, that just makes it much easier to load into ArcGIS. Uh, you don't need to worry about any uh, conversions. So a file geodatabase for master map topography. If you really need to, uh, use GML uh, for, for taking master map, which some people do if they're wanting, uh, looking at a lot of data or looking at uh, multiple uh, data sets. You can use the productivity suite, which is supplied by Esri UK. You should have access to that through your institution. Um, it's a free download as long as you take the, uh, you've got the Esri software. So if you don't, if you need to deal with GML and you don't have Productivity Suite, then speak to your local uh, software people at your institution who should be able to get that for you. Um, I'm just skipping through some of this, but uh, there's to do with raster data. As we talked about vector data before, this is raster. Um, again, I said, we supply TIFF and ASC files. These are just, um, TIFF is usually supplied uh, with a TFW file. That's just a world file that contains the coordinate referencing system. Uh, again, same with the shape files. You need to keep the TFW and the TIFF file together uh, when you load it. Uh, keep it in the same folder. Otherwise, when you load it into ArcGIS, it won't know where to get the TFW from and it won't put it in the right place. So keep those together. Sometimes we don't have the TFW and in that case you need to set up a coordinate system for the, for the data set. But most data sets that we supply now have the TFW. And again, the ASC is for the DTM and pretty bathymetry data. So where you've got DTM data, you'll use that as an ASC file. All these are tiled, so they come in chunks. They are coming in maybe 5, 10, 20 kilometer chunks of data. Uh, so uh, just, just to be aware that you might get multiple files if you ask for a particular area, if it crosses these tile boundaries. Uh, if you want to know a lot more about conversion and what formats are available and how to use those in your GIS, we have a help page. Um, <clears throat> is the URL there at the top. Again, you don't need to copy these down. The, the slides will be available uh, tomorrow. So there's a, a link in there to a page where it gives for every product how to use that in um, Esri products. Uh, and there's various options for doing that. But we give, we give the most common ones there. Um, just as I, as I go on now, so that's really how to get the data. What we're now going to look at is actually using that data uh, within ArcGIS itself. Um, you may be familiar with ArcGIS. Um, two versions of it are really available now. There's the ArcGIS desktop, or commonly also called ArcMap, and there's ArcGIS Pro, which is the newer version uh, using uh, just a newer version, basically. It will eventually replace ArcGIS Desktop, but probably not for quite a long time. Um, ArcGIS Pro allows you to do a lot more things with 3D. So particularly if you want to start looking, uh, say, say, with the building height data sets that we have, and you want to view those in 3D, then what you'd want to do is actually use ArcGIS Pro uh, or ArcGIS Online to view that data. I guess because 86% of you use ArcGIS desktop uh, and ArcMap, some of this may be uh, going over things that you already know, but just uh, for those that maybe uh, haven't used it lately or uh, need some more information, here's a, a little guidance. So to load data 
into ArcGIS, into ArcMap, the common way is to use the Add Data button. So once you load ArcGIS, you'll find you've got a little yellow uh, triangle square um, up here with an arrow in it. This is your Add Data button. So this, this is where you start to add information to ArcGIS. When you click that, you get the Add Data interface. Because we are loading um, files that are on our, our, our file system, we want to look at folder connections here. And this will give you uh, an access to a file browser where you can select particular files. Sometimes also you can drag and drop uh, some files into ArcMap, like shape files can just be dragged and dropped in there. Uh, but the, the, the safest way, the most reliable way, is to go through the folder connection to then choose which data that you want to add to it. So say you want to add some raster. Uh, we've downloaded 25k raster data. Uh, it's just available as a TIFF file. So we've done our add data. We've navigated to our folder where we've unzipped uh, the data that we got from Digimap. Uh, so in this, when we've unzipped it, we ended up with uh, for eight, uh, 11 uh, separate TIFF files. And it's not showing the, anything else, the TFWs that might be in there, uh, although they may well be in that folder. But these are just the TIFF files that we can actually select. And you can select multiple TIFF files uh, through this interface. If you just do a shift select, then you'll end up with multiple files or a control select if you want individual files. Um, so you just select as many of those as you want uh, and then say add and you may under some conditions you may get this message coming up saying an unknown spatial reference. Some of the data that we've got from Ordnance Survey doesn't have uh, either a coordinate reference system or a TFW in with the data. So this is just saying it's not really sure where these files are. Uh, it doesn't matter Normally, you can just usually load that data and it will still display OK, but if you need to do any processing or coordinate transformations or overlaying other data, you may need to add a spatial reference to the data sets. But mostly we've added spatial reference, so you shouldn't get that too often. Um, if you're talking about shape files, uh, such as VML, uh, then as we said before, uh, we've got our uh, folder. Uh, we've unzipped the data that we've downloaded and then this interface now just shows the .shp files that are in there. Now obviously, uh, as I said before, as well as the .shp, there's other files associated with these, but it doesn't show those in this interface. So you don't need to worry about those. As long as they are in that folder, uh, everything should be fine. So this is just the .shp files for VML. Uh, you see there's lots of different files. Each each feature type has got its own shape file. So a building uh, line has got a shape file, building text is a shape file, uh, general road casing is a shape file, general road casing text is a shape file. So you get a separate shape file for every feature uh, type within that product. Uh, this depends on the type of product. Sometimes we've only split it by uh, geometry, so there might be a, a point, a line, and an area shape file. Uh, it just depends. But you can select multiple shape files as well uh, in that interface. So if you just load that into RJS, you end up with something that looks like that. Not, not exactly pretty, but it's the data is there. There's no styling with it uh, at this stage. Um, if you want to add a file geodatabase, then uh, such as Mastermap Topo, again, you just navigate to the geodatabase, uh, you open it up by uh, selecting it. Again, this time you've got a few feature classes within that, and you select all of those, and you'll end up with your master map data. Again, without any representation, but that's all your data is in there. Um, so, when it comes to actually displaying the data in ArcGIS, a uh, common thing you might find is, oh, there's no data. Uh, I've loaded some data and it's, the screen is blank, uh, there's nothing there. Sometimes this can happen if the bounding box of the data is incorrect or there's some other data that you've already loaded. If there's nothing visible, 
then the, the first thing to try is to do a zoom to layer. Uh, right click on the on your uh, sorry. Right click on the product on the file name, and then you'll see a zoom to layer uh, option there. And this will just try and recenter the the map on your data itself. Um, so that's the easiest thing. Give that a try first of all. Um, so what what you want to do really the first thing after maybe getting the data in is to try and start styling the data particularly obviously with vector data where you want you know something that looks a bit like a map uh, and that is done with ArcGIS using um, uh, layer files so this is basically going from your raw master map data that we've loaded in ArcGIS to something that's stylized it's got the right colors line weights uh, styles, text, that kind of thing associated with it. So this is kind of what your, your first maybe task would be uh, and you want to maybe make it look the same as it will look uh, within Digimap. So initially it won't so what you need to do is start adding a cartographic style to that and for all the products that we supply there is uh, style files with this. So there's layer files with all the data sets that we have. And this link here that I've given, that shows you how to apply those layer files to the particular data set. Um, to find the layer files, you, oh, I'll just skip that one. That's how you apply them. Um, but to find the layer files in Digimap, you go again, this is within data download. This is your product information. Uh, remember, if you click info next to the product, you'll get this product information uh, window. At the bottom, there's a more info dot 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 link, and that will take you to a page where there's lots more information about that particular product. And on that page, there's a little table uh, for, uh, I think, all of the vector formats where it says if you've got shapefile, here's a, here are layer files which you can use with that shapefile. So you would download these and then follow the instructions that we gave earlier on how to apply those uh, layer files to the data that you've downloaded. Some of these we've created ourselves, some have come from OS, some have come from Esri. There are various sources of, of these data sets. And this is also other ones, some products, Productivity Suite, if you've got that, you'll and you process the data through Productivity Suite, you get uh, certain uh, layer files within that. Uh, also, uh, there's other software called Interpose, which we use sometimes, uh, and that also has, has layer files. Uh, so there's uh, data conversion tools uh, available, um, again, mentioned earlier. One of the things, uh, just got about a couple of minutes more to do here, uh, but one of the things that's quite important uh, to know about, at least, uh, to think about when you're loading data into ArcGIS, uh, whether it's from Digimap or wherever, it really doesn't matter. Um, but what you, if you're trying to load the data and overlay other data, something to think about is the projection and any transformation that you need to use. All the data, uh, all the OS data that we supply is in British National Grid, but some historic and marine data is, is not in British National Grid. Marine data, for instance, is in WGS84. And if you've got data in WGS84, whether it's marine Digimap or maybe you've got a GPS track, um, something like that, that will be in WGS84 and you'll need to apply a transformation to overlay the data correctly. And you need to select that transformation um, correctly within ArcGIS. Um, I don't have time at the moment to show that, but this, this link here uh, gives all the information you need on how to set up the transformation, which transformation to use to give you the most accurate result. Because depending on which uh, one you, you pick, you can be uh, a few centimeters uh, error or hundreds of meters error. Uh, so it makes a big difference uh, if you choose the wrong one. Um, so that's really kind of a very quick uh, introduction to using Digimap data in ArcGIS. Just to let you know, there's there's lots more resources available. 
uh, on our help site in our resource center. If you go to uh, the resource center from the Digimap homepage, you'll get here and here you've got guides and FAQs and video case studies and everything else. So we've got the Digimap resource center. There's a section called GIS and CAD resources on the resource center. You look in ArcGIS, you'll find lots of examples and instructions on how to do uh, like clipping, mosaicing, uh, processing uh, data sets, as well as displaying it, setting up symbology um, and that kind of thing. So there's lots more information in there. Uh, and there's also some self-paced exercises in the learning and teaching zone uh, where you're working with GIS and CAD. So there's the exercises are available, um, PDFs that you can just have. There's also some data there. Uh, you can follow those yourself uh, and get more familiar with the different products. There's also some on using ArcGIS Pro, so if you want to have a, a quick introduction to that, you can start looking at some of the examples in there as well. Although there's plenty of those on the Esri website. If you've not got access to it, I would recommend that you try and get access to the Esri training uh, website. Uh, you have access to that through the uh, the chess agreement that your university has, uh, that gives you access to all the web-based training that ESRI offer. So if you really need any training or any more help with using ArcGIS, then I would say that's the first place to go is the ESRI training website, where you'll find lots more information. Uh, but if you want some simple guides, then start using uh, ours as well. Um, if you want to get any help, then uh, we've got a chat facility through the help pages. You can also email us using the contact us um, uh, form uh, and we're happy to help with any questions that you have. Uh, certainly about getting data uh, and getting the data uh, from Digimap into a GIS system. Uh, although actually using the GIS, that's uh, slightly outside the scope of what we can offer. So anyway, thanks very much um, and have a good day.